Hi there, in today's video we are going to talk about the indicated airspeed and the true airspeed. This is the part 2 of a video that I made few days ago where we went through the differences between the indicated airspeed and the true airspeed and what happened to your true airspeed when you climb at constant indicated airspeed. We talked about the importance of knowing the formula of the dynamic pressure, okay, because that dynamic pressure is actually the big factor that will make your indicated airspeed to diverge from the true airspeed, okay. So the video that I made a few days ago, uh, I would strongly recommend to watch that because by watching that one, you will understand the full the content of today, okay. In today's video, I'm doing this video today because uh, I thought that would be better to show you in the simulator, in the real aircraft, what we just talked about in the previous video. So it is very important that you watch that video first. But very quickly, in the previous video, we went through the case where you climb at constant uh, indicated airspeed, okay? And then we actually discussed the tr what happened to the true airspeed, okay? And in the previous video, t talking about the dynamic pressure, we actually understood why if you climb at constant indicated airspeed, your true airspeed will increase, okay? So after I made that video, I thought that it would be great to show you actually in real life what happened. So in today's video, what we're gonna do, we're gonna line up out of this uh, Bergamo, airport which is in north of Italy okay and then we take off straight ahead and we just keep climb okay we will keep climb and then we will actually notice what will happen to your indicated airspeed that in this case is gonna be constant let's call it that we're gonna climb to 240 knots and we keep this 240 knots constant throughout the climb okay so we will keep 240 knots through the climb and then we will check and we'll see what happened to your true airspeed in these sophisticated aircrafts like the Boeing 737, we've got all the sorts of information. So if you look at the instruments in here, okay, you will see that we've got the indicated airspeed in here, we've got the ground speed in here, and then we've got the true airspeed in there. Okay, this dashed here is the wind. Okay, in today's today I think I said the 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 simulator without the wind. Okay, so with no winds in this case, we should have a low altitude. The indicated airspeed that is pretty similar to the true airspeed, okay, because the density is high. However, when we climb, the more we climb, the less density we have. And if we climb at constant indicated airspeed, the true airspeed will increase, okay? So, without further ado, let's line up and uh, take off. Great. So, give me a second. I'm just gonna do like that. Here we go. So, we should remove the parking brake in here. Good. So, guys. The, the goal for today is just to show you what happened to your true airspeed in real life, okay? So it's not a goal of show you how to fly the 737 or make the takeoff. So I'm just gonna, uh, the main thing here today is just to take off, uh, retract the landing gear, retract the flaps and climb at 240 knots, as we said. Fantastic, so let's line up. Again, guys, if you have any questions, okay, if you have any questions regarding the video, okay, or any questions regarding the other video that you watched, just drop me a comment below and then I will help you out, okay? So let's line up a little bit and then we perform the takeoff. There we go. So ready for takeoff. I'm going to add a little bit of thrust in here. And we set the takeoff thrust. So we've got a positive rate and we retract the landing gear. And we keep climbing. At 2,000 feet, I'm gonna lower the nose to allow the aircraft to accelerate and to retract the flaps. Here we go. So 2,000 feet, I'm gonna lower the nose gently. Here we go. So now we can set flaps one and flaps up. 
okay notice now they they indicated higher speed okay so they indicated higher speed as you can see from the screen there let me engage the uh, the autopilots and everything okay so engage the autopilot the auto throttle so that should be done i'm gonna go into the level change and should work like that here we go so now we've got the autopilot in i'm gonna say 240 knots here we go so 240 knots during climb and now what we're gonna do we're gonna stay focused on our indicated air speed which is in this case 210 knots and our true air speed 225 so as you can see already the true air speed is higher than indicated air speed but let's see what happens when you climb just gonna add uh, a little bit of lights in here here we go maybe it's a little bit better to see easy to see here we go fantastic so now we've got 233 knots of indicator speed and 255 so we've got around 20 knots of difference between the indicated higher speed and the true air speed as you can see in here next to the t, t true air speed tas we've got the gs the ground speed and they are pretty much similar because there is no wind if there would have been any wind we should we should be in here okay and then with the headwind or tailwind component you should have an higher or a lower ground spin depending on the headwind or tailwind component okay so now let's see we've got 240 knots on the indicated air speed and 270 knots on the true air speed we've got 30 knots of difference and this is all because as we said yesterday sorry yes in the previous video we talked about the dynamic pressure okay the dynamic pressure the formula takes into account the uh, density of the air and your true air speed okay so the higher you climb if the density of the air goes down your true air speed will increase if you climb at constant indicated air speed so as you can see now we've got a constant 240 knots however as you can read in there the true air speed is actually increasing so we just passed 10,000 feet now and our true air speed is still increasing while our indicated air speed is still constant okay Few of you, few of you guys, they ask, they ask me why we have the indicated air speed and why it is so important. Okay, so the indicated air speed it is very important because all the aerodynamics of the plane and all of the performances and the parameters of the aircraft are based on the indicated air speed. Okay, so for example, your stall speed is based on the indicated air speed, not on the true air speed. Okay, so the stall speed that you read on your airplane flight manual, okay, is based on the indicated air speed, and that's why we actually fly the indicated air speed. So let's say you open up your book, and in this case, uh, just for example, okay, the aircraft stall speed will be 190 knots, for example, okay. In this case, we know that we are going, we are flying 240 knots, so we are above the stall speed, and we are 50 knots above the stall speed. Okay, we don't use the true air speed, but we use the indicated air speed. Okay. Another question was, when the controller asked me report speed, which speed should I report? You should again report your indicated air speed. Okay, because that speed, the indicated air speed, is the speed that everybody uses for flying. Okay. You, you don't report the true airspeed, you just report the indicated airspeed because everybody uses that as a reference, okay? And if you're flying faster or slower than the aircraft in front of you, for example, you have to use the same reference because if you use different references, then the separation will not be possible, okay? So guys, quick look again. We've got 240 knots of indicated airspeed and we've got 306 knots of true airspeed, as you can see indicated airspeed is constant and the true airspeed is increasing that's exactly what i wanted to show you uh, during this video okay and as you can see since there is no wind the ground speed is pretty much similar to your true airspeed the difference between the ground speed and the true airspeed i made a separate video about that i strongly recommend you to watch that but anyway very quickly the ground speed as it says is a speed that you've got on the ground so if you're going from madrid to paris for example you use your ground speed to know when you're gonna be at your destination because it's the speed that you've got on the ground okay the true air speed is the speed that you've got relative to the airflow okay so when there is no headwind or tailwind component these two speeds are pretty much equals okay they're pretty much the same however 
when you have got an headwind component, for example, your ground speed will be slower than your true air speed. And when you have a tailwind component, your ground speed will be higher than the true air speed. Okay, because the true air speed again is the speed that you've got relative to the airflow, and the ground speed is the speed that you've got on the ground. Okay, guys, as you can see now, we've got 240 knots of the indicated air speed, and we've got 326 knots on the true air speed. Okay, guys, again, if you have any questions regarding the true air speed indicator speed, leave a comment below and then I will help you out. Also, go to piloclimb.com where you can subscribe for free pilot training content. I wish you a great day and I'll see you on the next one.